and welcome to episode 130 of the Giddy Knits podcast. As always, I am Helen and I am coming to you from Dundee in Scotland, where I live with my husband Tom and my two boys, Arthur who is nine and Jasper who is six. Today is Thursday the 1st of June and as always, this is my crafting podcast. <laughs> Hello, it's been a while, I know. Also, slight disclaimer, this is my second time recording the first part of this podcast because it's actually now about 20 past four in the afternoon. I've got one of the kids home, one of them is next door. I sat down and recorded about half past nine this morning, but I've just gone to edit it and for some reason the first bit of video has scaled really weirdly and I've tried to rescale it in my editing app and it hasn't worked. So, all of that to say, if the beginning of this seems a little bit different to the end of this, then that'll be why, because I am having to re-record later in the day the um, first part of this podcast, and I've kind of lost track of what I talked about and what I didn't talk about, so we're just going to see how it goes. Anyway, welcome back. It's been a while. I'm clearly out of practice if I'm failing to get the video incorrect. <laughs> um, as always, life just got busy and unfortunately the podcast is one of the things that just slips when life gets busy. We've had a lot going on personally, family wise and visitors and things like that, but also I've had a lot going on with Giddy Yarns. It's been very busy and there's been quite a lot of changes that have been happening. I will talk about those more in the shop news section at the end of the podcast, um, but you may have noticed if you've been on my website today or fact watching the introduction to this vlog this podcast you may have noticed that I have done a few little branding changes just a bit of a refresh of my branding for Giddy Yarns and I've spilt that over slightly into the podcast as well um, so we have a new um, what's it called a new like cover screen thingy um, we have a new little pop-up thing that says where you can find me um, which you will already have seen and I've also done um, a little bit of a new introduction music, so a little bit of a refresh for the podcast. Um, but otherwise, everything is pretty much still the same. Um, you'll see that over on my website as well, that the branding and stuff has just updated and refreshed a little bit. Um, so, anyway, what have I got for you today? <laughs> I have got um, a couple of finished objects that I wanted to talk about. I've got a couple of works in progress that I was going to share. Um, and then I've got some new cast-ons to talk about. Um, I'm also going to share, which I've already shared, so it's really confusing me. I'm also going to share some projects that are no longer whips because I am going to rip out a couple of projects. Um, I've got a bit of yarny goodness to share. And then also at the end, I've got a fair bit of shop news to talk about as well. Just some updates and some changes that are happening and also just kind of what's new in the shop as always. So yeah, I hope you've got yourself a drink of some kind and a crafting project and you can sit down and join me while I chat about some of my crafting projects and things like that. Um, quick announcements first, we do have the Giddy Yarns Make Along that is running as always um, which is basically any project that uses at least 50% of my yarn, you can enter it into the make along um, to be in with a chance of winning a prize of some kind. Um, and you can enter that over in Ravelry, in our Ravelry group, on our Discord channel, and also on Instagram. Um, I was gonna say Ravelry group. I know there are people who still use Ravelry and I keep the um, make along threads up over there so that people can still use them and enter them. I am really, really not using, apart from to get patterns, I'm not using Ravelry very much at all and I find myself over in the Ravelry group less and less. Um, so if you want somewhere where you're going to get lots of interaction and uh, lots of chat and things like that, then the Discord group is absolutely the best place to come. Um, we've got all kinds of threads over there and I'm much more present and much more active in it. Um, it definitely kind of fits in better with my lifestyle really. Um, so yeah, Discord is the place to be. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to say about that. Um, what else? 
as I said, everything's been really busy. So I feel like I've had very, very little crafting time and I've really not been reaching for my knitting very much. Um, I've tended to, even in the evenings, like I'll sit down to read my book and I'll put my knitting next to me and then I'll realise that it's bedtime and I've not picked it up once. Um, so I'm trying... I'm trying to actively be a bit more focused on remembering to pick up my knitting, um, but that has changed the type of projects that I'm wanting to work on a little bit because I'm looking much more for simple projects that I can kind of, um, I can do while I'm focusing on other things. So projects I don't need to think about too much. Things are a little bit, things that are a little bit simpler, things that I can do while I'm reading just to keep my hands busy, but not my brain busy, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, so yeah, you'll see a little bit of that in when I rip out the projects and share the projects that I'm actually gonna be ripping out. Um, but it also shows in the new projects that I've cast on. But saying that, I have finished a couple of things. So, first of all, I have finished a sock. <laughs> this is one of the endless, it feels like now, um, single socks that I have been knitting for Tom. I started these out of the colour of the month from last year. This was the September colourway from last year, I believe. Um, this is actually one of my favourite colourways from the year. I really, really like how this one came out. Um, and I've been knitting Tom single socks. My intention was to do them all by Christmas. I think I managed to get him four pairs by Christmas. Um, so eight individual socks. Um, and I've still got this. I've got two more after this. Um, but I'm getting there. I've nearly got them all done. Um, why am I knitting single socks? Well, I'll have mentioned this before, but if you're new and you don't know, my husband has actively decided to wear odd socks. He wears odd socks every single day, which for me, knitting him socks is great because I only ever have to knit him one sock and he's perfectly happy. He doesn't want a pair, um, so I'm embracing that fully. It also means when I do the laundry, I don't need to pair his socks, which is really good. Um, although that sounds like I'm some 90s, 50, 1950s housewife that does all the laundry. We don't, we do share it, but it just means that it's when I'm doing it, it's one less thing to do because I don't have to pair his socks. Um, what am I rambling about now? So yeah, one finished object. I have finished a single sock. Um, I've still got, I know this technically isn't finished objects, but I'll show you them now quickly. Two more, as I said. So I've still got um, that one, which was the October colorway. This one is ready for a heel now. And then I've also got this one, which was the December colorway. That one's got a fair bit to go on the leg, um, but they're coming along. These are just great mindless projects. So um, they do get picked up every so often when I just want to do something, when I want to keep my hands busy while I'm doing something else. Um, so that's those ones. I also have another little finished object. Here he is. <laughs> this is Neil of Grimblewood. He is one of the Grimblewood gnomes. Um, he is one of the patterns from Sarah at Imagined Landscapes. Um, and this is a collection of gnomes. I think there's, I don't know how many there are in the collection actually. Um, I think there might be four gnomes in the first part and then there's more to come out later in the year. Um, but these are not mystery ones, but they're so fun. And he's brilliant, I love him, he's super cute. I just used yarn from my stash, nothing fancy, just leftovers that I've had lying around. Um, you don't need a lot of each yarn for these little ones, so it's quite handy for using up kind of stash yarn and scraps and stuff like that, which is really good. Um, but yeah, he's all finished. Um, in fact, there is, I'm going to pop him over here. Um, there is a um, new mystery gnome knit along starting today. Um, I've caked up my yarn all ready to go, um, and if I've I think I've talked about this on the podcast, I can't remember, it's been a while, I can't remember when I last recorded a podcast, but I was one of the official dyers this time round. Um, so I dyed up a whole host of kits um, that look kind of like this. Um, they are on the website if you are late and you decide you want to knit a gnome. <laughs> I dyed up a whole host of kits um, and it does mean that I've seen the gnome in advance, which is quite exciting. I'm not one of those people that is desperate to avoid spoilers. I quite like spoilers, especially when it comes to knitting. Um, so 
I'm excited. I've picked my kit out. I'll share it with you next time once I've made some progress. Um, but I was going to say, if you are new to gnomes and you're scared of doing them or you look at them and you think, oh, that's far too fiddly, I couldn't possibly do that, I would urge you to give it a go because Sarah's patterns are incredible. They are so well written, so clear. There are video tutorials throughout for any tricky bits and pieces that there might be. Um, and it's a really good way of learning new techniques and things like that, but it's also quite a small, quite a quick project. Um, so it's quite low stakes as well. Um, so yeah, knit gnomes. I say knit gnomes. Um, I have set up a thread in the Discord group for anyone that is joining in with the Mystery Gnome Knit Along. Um, so head on over there if you want to come and join in and share your pictures and share your colours and share your progress. You don't need to be using my kits. Any, any yarn that you're doing it out of, absolutely fine. I just want to see all the gnomes. So yeah, that's my two finished objects. Now, I have got a couple of works in progress that I have made some progress on. The first one is my Soundwaves cowl. This is a fully craft house magic podcast, uh, fully craft house magic project. It's living in a craft house magic project bag. The pattern is the Soundwaves cowl, which is a pattern by Ellie of craft house magic. Um, and the yarn I'm using is Ellie's um, advent calendar from 2022. Um, so this is where I am at so far. Now, I have made a decision with this. So, the Soundwaves Cowl features this textured pattern all over it. Um, you knit it in a loop and then you graph the two ends together. Um, well, technically you're supposed to start with a provisional cast on. I didn't do that because I couldn't be bothered. Um, so I'm going to graft the two ends together. Um, but it has this textured pattern, which is really simple. It's really easy to follow. The pattern is really clear but my brain is just not in a place to keep up with it. I kept making mistakes and it was driving me slightly mad. So I decided I've done 10 sections with the textured pattern, but I have now decided to stop doing the textured pattern and I'm just gonna carry on plain from this point out. Um, which will give me 10 sections with the texture pattern and the rest plain. So I don't think it'll look too strange. It will just look like a featured section, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And it does now mean this is literally just round and round and round until I run out of the yarn and then join the next colour. So it's a really, really mindless project that I'll be able to do while I'm knitting and things like that. I think the last time I showed it to you, I was here. So I have made a fair amount of progress, which is good to see. I have one more project. Now, annoyingly, my battery light is flashing at me, which would be typical because this podcast has been a disaster, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> so the other project I've done quite a lot of work on is <clears throat> my Mild Magic Shawl, which is a pattern by Stephen West. Last time I shared it with you, I was in the midst of this moss stitch section here, which has taken quite a lot of work. And I was getting a little bit frustrated with changing colors constantly in it and things like that. Um, but I've since finished that section. I've done this section here, which is a brioche section. And I decided to hold, um, a, skein, hold a strand of fluff with a strand of four ply. Um, so with this pattern, as I said, it's the Mild Magic pattern by Stephen West. With it, you hold two strands of fingering weight throughout, marling them together. Um, so with this one, I held a strand of lace weight fluff with the four ply. I've then also done this section, which has got two kind of turquoisey blue strands held together. And I've then done this section as well, which again, it's got two kind of turquoisey strands, but one of them has got kind of purpley speckles in. Um, I liked the lighter sections, the fact that I've done the lighter sections, because it contrasts nicely with those. So I think that's worked quite well. I'm about to move on to the next moss stitch section, or um, seed stitch, whichever you prefer to call it. Um, and I'm doing that in the darker purple. So this one, the darker purple. And then I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold that dark purple all the way through. It's the dark purple I used in this section. I'm gonna hold that all the way through and then alternate the second strand um, every so often, but probably in larger sections than I did in this, just to give me a little bit less time um, 
just to give me a little bit less time changing colours, if that makes sense. Bigger sections without having to change colours. Um, I think that's the final section that I need to do. There is the option of making it larger um, and adding extra sections, but I think I'm going to stick with the regular size because actually, looking at the size of it, it's going to be it's going to be a really decent size anyway. I don't think I'm in need to make it bigger. Um, and then once I've done that section, there's a whole um, I cord border around the whole thing. Um, but yeah, it's coming on. <clears throat> So yeah, the one thing I will say, again, like I said with the Imagine Landscapes patterns, Stephen West patterns are brilliant if you're nervous about trying new techniques because he always has fantastic tutorials linked in the videos, uh, linked in the patterns and step-by-step um, -step bits to help you out with everything. He really holds your hand. Now, despite me saying that I've not been doing very much knitting recently, I have actually cast on three new pairs of socks. I was just needing... I was just needing something simple and easy and mindless that I could pick up and grab and would be small and not very daunting. Um, so I cast on a few pairs of socks. So if I can find them all, I've put them in funny places. There's two there and there's one there. We will start with the boring ones. Um, I have cast on just a pair of vanilla socks. I don't actually know what this yarn is. Um, so if anyone out there recognises it, tell me. It's a commercial sock yarn, but it's been un it's been out of the yarn band for possibly years. Um, and I finally thought, well, do you know what? I'm just gonna cast it on. Um, so I did. But this is this is it. Um, so as I said, it's a commercial sock yarn. I have a feeling it could be a Stylecraft one. Um, or possibly even a King Cole. I'm not 100% sure. Um, this is how it is knitting up. I'm just doing a vanilla sock um, in this one. Um, so it's just basically round and round. Um, I think I did 15 rows of rib and I'm now just going round and round for the leg. And I'm gonna keep it all. I'm not gonna add a contrast for the heel. I'm just gonna keep it all in the same and they won't match. Um, I will just do two and that'll be a pair. Um, but they're nice, easy, just pick it up and go kind of mindless projects, which as I've, as I've stated a lot, I need at the moment. Um, so that's those ones. But yeah, if you do know what this yarn is, if you know what this yarn is, let me know. I did try and do like a reverse, I took a photograph of it and tried to do like a search with the photograph. But the only thing that came up was that somebody on Etsy had knit headbands out of it to sell the headbands, but they didn't say what the yarn was. So I didn't manage to find it anywhere. Um, but I'm curious because I like to know these things and it's strange for me to not have the, in the yarn band. I think I'd put these aside, I'd caked it up and I was gonna do it with my, um, my circular sock machine, my 3D printed one, but I've had some issues with my 3D printed sock machine and um, I've not touched it in probably over a year because um, I got frustrated with it because it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do and um, it needs some repair work. So yeah, I think it's been, it's been hidden, this yarn's been hidden there for ages and um, the yarn band's obviously gone astray. But I've also picked up a couple of other yarns and cast on a couple of other projects. So the first one that I've picked up, here we go, is, if I can get it out of the bag, um, this sock set, which is one of the um, ones from Craft House Magic. Um, I joined in with her um, music from the movies sock club back in, I think it might have been 2021, I'm not 100% sure. Um, and I have finally, finally started using some of them. Um, so this one, oh, have I kept the yarn band? I think I kept the yarn band. Yes, this one is, um, oh, the Dirty Dancing one. So it's I've had the time of my life. Um, I love this one. This was my favourite colourway, I think, from um, the club. And I have cast on the Crunkled Socks, which is a pattern by Kay Jones. Um, I'm very, I'm doing it slightly different. Um, oh, I think I'm about to get a delivery. Um, um, right, sorry about that. Um, postman. <laughs> I can see out the front window um, from where I'm sitting. So he can probably see in too and see me standing here with great, sitting here with great big studio lights and a camera in front of me. So goodness knows what he thinks I'm up to. But anyway, um, Tom has ordered a new coffee machine, which has just arrived. 
what was I trying to say? Crunkled socks. So yeah, I have cast on the crunkled socks, which is a pattern by Kay Jones. Um, and I have, um, I've changed the pattern slightly, which I often do. I didn't want to do um, the pattern on the front and the back of the leg. Um, so I'm just doing the pattern on the front of the leg and the front of the foot. Um, mostly because I, I tend to use 68 stitches for my sock. I find a 64 stitch sock is slightly too small and a 72 st inch sock is slightly too big. Now I probably could do a 72 stitch sock and go down a needle size and that would probably work for me but I don't really want to knit on smaller needles. I quite like I quite like um, the gauge and the tension I get when I knit on two and a half millimeter needles so I tend to just do 68 stitches which is fine most of the time but when it comes to pattern socks often if the pattern is written for all the way around the leg um, then that won't work because the pattern won't work with the number of stitches that I tend to do. So what I'll do is I'll do um, the 64 stitch pattern but I'll just add, I won't do the back of the leg and I'll add a knit stitch at either side of the pattern. So I've got like a panelled pattern down the front which uses the what 32 stitches of half that you'd have on the top of the foot. Does that make any sense? Um, so yeah, basically that's kind of what I do. <laughs> Um, so that is what I'm doing with these. So it's the crunkled socks. Um, I'm loving how this is working so far. I did make a mistake and I did accidentally put one row round the back and I thought I could rip it out and then I thought, do you know what? I don't care. I will just try and remember to do the same on the other sock and we'll have that as a little, a little feature. Um, so yeah, that is the crunkled socks. Um, I love how this colourway is working up in it. It's really, really pretty. It's such a subtle colourway. Um, so that are those, that's those ones. Now, I did think I should have cast them on um, and done them um, concurrently. I have got needles in here and I have got the yarn split into two 50 gram cakes. So I could potentially do that. But when I cast on the three pairs, do you know, I just... I'd done so much ribbing that day to cast on three pairs of socks that I couldn't be bothered to cast on the second one in a lot of them. Um, so I haven't. So I might regret that when it comes to knitting the second sock, but we will see. Um, and then the third pair of socks I've cast on is the bookshelf socks um, by Becky, um, Becky Mundy, who is, um, she has the Becky Knits podcast here on YouTube. Um, and you may have seen this all over Instagram recently. Um, it is Becky's first pattern um, and she's had it out to testers um, recently and it is, it's so much fun, it's gorgeous. Again, I've done the same as, um, I've done the same as what I've done with the crunkled socks and I have, I'm only doing the pattern on the front of the leg rather than the back of the leg. Um, they'd designed it to go all the way around the leg but actually I just, I just prefer it with the way I do my, the way I knit my socks and the number of stitches I use, I just prefer to have the pattern down the front of the leg. So that's what I'm doing. Um, but here we go. So this is, oh, I don't know if that, I just, oh, knocking the microphone. I'm hoping that didn't come across in big bangs or anything on the, we'll find out when I come to edit the audio, won't we? Um, so there we go. It's got this lovely kind of bookshelfy textured pattern um, down the leg. Um, and as I said, I'm only doing it on one side um, so the back is just plain um, and the yarn, I'm just dropping everything, dropping everything. Um, the yarn I'm using is again, I don't think I've got the yarn band for this one. I know where it is, but the yarn I'm using again is one of the um, ones from Craft House Magic um, from that same uh, yarn club. Um, I will dig the yarn band out. I'm pretty sure it's in my basket that's just up there. Um, I will dig it out for next time and make sure it's in the bag so I can tell you which colourway it is. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying them. They're nice and simple. It's only a really short pattern repeat so it's really easy to kind of just, just get into the rhythm with. Um, and I'm looking forward to having those ones done. 
I really wanted to test the pattern um, when Becky put it out to testers, but I just knew myself. <laughs> and I knew that there's no way that I would get it knit within a time frame of, of, of a tester um, so I waited patiently waited patiently until it was um, until it was finished and I could um, just purchase the pattern and knit it in my own time right so we are now on to the no longer whips I have dug out two projects one a very new project and one a project that's been around for quite a long time um, and I intend to rip these out. Um, so the first of those is the pattern, that the project that's been on the needles for quite a long time and that is my twists and turns shawl. I still haven't finished section one and in all honesty I'm not going to now. It's been so long since the pattern was released and I'm not reaching for it um, and it's just, I mean, it's a great pattern and I think it would look gorgeous in the yarns I picked, but it's just, I'm just not reaching for it and it's just sitting there and it's driving me mad. You know, if I decide in the future, actually, I would really like to knit that shawl, I'm going to focus on it and I'm going to do it, then I can always come back and I can always start it again. But at the moment, it's just sitting there making me feel bad about not knitting it. Um, so this is the first project that is coming off the needles. Um, I'm wondering if we can actually take it off the needles on camera or whether this will be a disaster. It will probably be a disaster because there are stitch markers on here. Um, so we will, we, will, we will start it. But yep, yeah, here we go. I've also not got the best needles in. I'm using um, Knit Pros. I use a lot of Knit Pro Zings um, because they're what I have and what I'd always had kind of from the start. So... I don't tend to replace my needles until I need to um, but if I do replace them I won't be I'll probably go with the higher hires but because I've got the knit prosings for larger projects I tend to kind of stick stick with what I've got I'd gravitate towards the higher higher sharps for sock knitting and I have definitely replaced all of my knit prosings um, with higher higher sharps for sock knitting because I do find the joins in the zings are a bit snaggy um, which normally on a larger project is not an issue but on a smaller project like a smaller kind of um, yeah like socks where you're dealing with a tighter gauge and smaller yarn and stuff like that it, I really struggle with them so yeah but for larger projects it doesn't tend to bother me too much but when you're trying to rip things off the needles it's definitely not as smooth when the joints are tagging, stag, snagging but we've managed it and I've not lost any of those stitch markers so there we go, one project off the needles. I will finish ripping that out later. <laughs> um, and then there is a second project that needs to come off the needles as well. And this one's a shame, but I need to be honest with myself and accept that this isn't gonna happen. Um, and that is my Summer Sorrel that I cast on relatively recently. Um, the Summer Sorrel is a pattern by um, pattern by Woolen Pine um, and it's a it's a kind of summer a summer jumper it's designed to be short sleeved I was going to put longer sleeves on it um, but it's a fingering weight um, jumper it has this um, interesting kind of drop stitch texture and then the whole body is knit in reverse stocking stitch um, so it's a garment that I really love the look of but I'm just not enjoying, I'm not enjoying knitting the drop stitches. I'm not getting on with them because it involves a lot of concentration to do them. I'm not reaching for it. So it's just getting, it's just getting left. It's never gonna get finished. I've got other garments on the needles. Well, I've got one other garment on the needles, which I'd rather focus on getting that finished um, because it's a lot further through. So this is coming off the needles. Um, and I think I'm going to reuse this yarn. I'll talk about the yarn in a minute. I'm going to reuse this yarn and I'm going to make the pavement sweater, which is what I'd originally bought this yarn for. I'm going to make the pavement sweater by Vera Valamaki, which is a relatively, there we go, it's off the needles. It's a relatively simple um, sort of stocking stitch pattern. Um, so yeah. That's what I'm going to do. This yarn is um, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. 
I think it'll work really nicely in a stocking stitch kind of pattern because um, that'll really show off the yarn um, rather than that more complicated design. I think this will work better in something simpler. Um, it is um, Purple Mania is the colourway name. As I said, I'm dropping everything today. Um, and it is by Fru... I can't pronounce it. Fru... 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 Do you know, um, Therese of Brixton Pearl has told me how to pronounce this on multiple occasions and I still can't get it right. Um, Fru Valborg. Um, I picked this up at the last um, Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, and it is gorgeous. But it, it deserves to be something that I'm actually going to finish and actually going to knit. So that's another project officially off the needles. There we go. There is one other project that I am debating ripping off the needles and that is my advent project using my Giddy Yarns advent calendar from last year that I started as a sample, still haven't finished and I'm trying to think, I'm thinking to myself, in, in all honesty, am I going to finish it? I'm torn between um, seeing if there's a sample knitter that would be willing to finish it for me so that I can still have it as a finished object to show off my previous advent calendars or just ripping it out and kind of not worrying about it because I've got so much other yarn from other dyers that I want to knit with that I'm not sure I'm gonna finish that one so I don't know. I'm leaning towards maybe seeing if a sample knitter wants to finish it off for me um, because then I'll still have the finished object to be able to show, show the yarn. I always struggle with samples um, because it feels like work and actually my knitting time shouldn't feel like work um, and yeah hence the sample knitters because actually it's much better if I can get it so that my knitting time is relaxing and I enjoy it rather than it feeling like more work um, so yeah I don't know we'll see we'll see what decision I make in the future um, right that is all of the knitting content that I've got for you today. I do have a little bit of yarny goodness to share and then I have got um, a little bit of shop news as well. Try and have some tea before it goes completely cold because um, it's actually a really nice cup of tea. Okay, yarny goodness. I have just two little bits of yarny goodness. So I have signed up this year to the Spectrum Fibres, um, oh what's the club called? The dream, her dream yarn club. Um, and this is the April colourway, which arrived. Isn't it gorgeous? It is called Lavender Haze and it is beautiful. I knew all of these yarns in this club would be stunning. I'm um, keeping them all separate um, and I'm going to kind of look at them all once they've finished and decide what I'm going to do because it may very well be that some of these get put together to make a kind of a garment of some kind or I don't really know but I just know they're gorgeous um, so yeah that's that one and then the other one I've got is Henny Penny Makes um, Mini Lovers Club um, and this is again the April colourway <laughs> oh these are bright they're blowing the camera out <laughs> They are bright yellow. Um, so the club is usually um, four mini skeins. So it would usually be four mini skeins. But Erin and I are swapping. So she's having my um, fantasy minis. And I'm having some of her mini lovers minis. Um, but because mine's five, she's adding me in an extra in the variegated each month. Um, so that I've got five. And I think, I think I'm probably going to make a blanket out of this. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet but that is what I'm leaning towards um, because I think I think that'll be really fun so I'm going to do some kind of blanket I'm leaning towards maybe holding it double with something else um, <clears throat> so maybe holding each one double with an undyed um, and just making big granny squares and kind of going that way with it but I don't know they'll be put aside for a while because I have more than enough blankets on the go already um, and you'll notice there hasn't been any blanket progress in this episode because I haven't reached for any of my blankets. So despite the fact that I've got, just looking on my list, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blankets on the go at the moment, none of them have been worked on in over a month. <clears throat> yes, <laughs> I need to make some progress. I'm losing my voice now as well. Okay, so the final thing is shop news. Um, so, <laughs> 
You'll notice a few changes in my shop. If you're a regular to my website, you will notice that I have had a little bit of a refresh. Um, a little bit of a refresh and a little bit of a revamp. The back end of my website was just getting really, really messy. Um, and I've had to make a few changes as well. Um, so I thought, do you know what? I just took it down for sort of three days and did a massive stock take, sorted all the listings out, massive revamp and all of that kind of stuff. So first of all is um, the new kind of refreshed branding. Now, I knew I didn't want to get rid of my logo. I love my logo. Tom designed my logo for me right back six years ago when I first started my business. And it just feels, it feels like me. I love it. And I didn't want to change it. But I did want to do something that would just refresh things. <clears throat> so, hence, we've gone with the kind of, the, 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 the splash, which was, of course, in no way inspired by, in no way inspired by my tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, it works and I'm really happy with how it works and I've managed to be able to kind of bring those colours in elsewhere and um, I'm happy it brightens things up a little bit I feel and um, I've added my new tagline because as you will have noticed if you're a regular a regular customer or even just regular kind of watcher I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, a lot of my yarns are inspired by books and literature and that kind of, that is what inspires me and that is what I enjoy doing. And I can't see myself moving away from that going ahead. So we've gone with a new tagline, which is um, get lost in a good yarn, which I really liked because um, it kind of stuck with the whole get lost in a good book, but also obviously the word yarn can be used um, not only for kind of yarn in terms of knitting, but also, you know, you, you, you tell a yarn, like yarn is a word in a kind of older English that would also be used for a story. Um, so I liked, I liked that. So I'm happy with that. It's been on my mind for ages. I've really wanted to kind of introduce that tagline in a way and it, things will be, it will go, it will be coming more if that makes sense. Like I've, I've got yarn bands coming with, with the new logo on and stuff like that. So going forward, we have a refresh. Whew, it's been a bit nerve wracking and I hope you all like it. If you don't like it, please don't tell me because um, I can't take that. <laughs> So I hope you like it. <laughs> um, I've also just, I've tidied up the website a little bit. I've tidied up the navigation. All of my listings are now done by Yarnbase. So if you're looking for, um, so you've got the option to search by colorway, it, as you have always have done, and you can go through the collections and you can find stuff by colorway. But um, you'll also find that if you want to, if you're going to the shop specifically looking for some DK yarn, there is now separate listings for all the DK yarn done um, by colorway as well. So rather than going into say, Susan, uh, Gift for Susan, for example, which is one of my Narnia colorways, and having to look and see what bases it's available in, in the drop down bar, and then not knowing whether it's available in this or that or whatever. Instead, now you might find a Gift for Susan, and then there will be however many listings, and each listing will be a different base. Um, so if it's sold out on a base, then you'll be able to see that straight away. Um, so yeah, I've done that. I've added a few bits to the navigation, hopefully to make things a little bit easier. I've updated things like my shipping pages and my about me page and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and hopefully just made it all a little bit easier to navigate. It's not a massive change in terms of the website. You're not going to come across it and go, oh my goodness, I don't know how to use this now. It's not a big change. I'll still keep things on the home page when they're new in and everything like that will work the same way. It's just little tweaks to hopefully make it and easier, easier for you to use. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so this is all partly because of a bit of a change I've had to make, which I've kind of talked about on the podcast previously, but I have been avoiding it for ages. But unfortunately, well, unfortunately, but also it's a positive thing as well. I have hit and gone over the VAT threshold in the UK, which means that I now have to charge VAT on all of my products. I have to pay 20% of everything I sell. So every skein of yarn I sell, I have to pay 20% to the government in tax. Um, 
So it does mean, unfortunately, I have had to increase my prices. So that was one of the other things I needed to do. One of the other reasons I needed to take my website down was to go through and work out all my new prices, increase all my new prices, and do all of that kind of thing in the background. Um, so yeah, I've been avoiding doing it for as long as possible. I've really tried to stay under the threshold, but it's just got to that point where I couldn't, I, I would be putting, I would have to be stopping doing things that I've already committed to and that I want to do. So we are embracing it. It is scary um, because I kind of need to just go for it and hope that, hope that people aren't put off by the price increase and hope that my sales don't suddenly drop because of it because then obviously I will have registered for VAT and then I won't be meeting the threshold anymore and it will be all complicated. Um, but yeah, hopefully you will still support me. So yeah, thank you for everyone getting me to this point because I wouldn't get to this point if it wasn't for you. And um, yeah, so yeah, that's one of the other changes that you will see. Um, clubs, clubs, um, clubs are available again now because it is the 1st of June. I will show you, I will share the clubs, I will share the inspiration images, but I was just gonna say the club prices haven't increased for June because I thought that was unfair for anyone who didn't order the quarterly. So normally you can order the quarter up front. So in March, people had the option to order March, April, no, in April, April, people had the order to or, the option to order April, May and June in one go up front. And I didn't think it was fair to those people who decided to order monthly to suddenly have a price increase in June when those that ordered quarterly didn't have that price increase in June. Um, so I've kept my club prices the same this month, but they will be going up from the 1st of July. When the next quarterly instalment goes up, the prices will be going up um, in line with the rest of my price increases. And it's not a massive price increase. Uh, we're talking a couple of pounds per skein. It's a little bit more when it comes to the mini skeins because obviously the increase is per mini skein. Um, but it doesn't put me it doesn't put me out of, I don't know how to word this, it doesn't make me more expensive than a lot of other dyers out there. I'm on a par with other VAT registered dyers in terms of my prices. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying to say. But anyway, let's stop talking about me freaking out about my price increase because I've had to do it and, uh, um, <laughs> and let's talk about yarn instead. So clubs. Um, as always, I have got two clubs running this year. So we've got um, the Fantasy Club, Fantasy Book Club, which is each month is inspired by a different um, theme or thing from fantasy literature. Um, so this month, I'll pop the mood board up here. June is inspired by um, mermaids and sirens. And this is the mood board for June. Um, with the Fantasy Book Club, you can order um, anything pretty much. <laughs> So you can order sock sets, you can order 100 gram skeins across all my different bases. Um, you can also choose to go for mini bundles instead, um, or you can choose to go for both. You can also have the option, um, there's a separate listing for it, but there's also the option to add a contrast skein, whether you want to do that in the same yarn base as you've gone for, or whether you want to add it as a contrast skein in the fluff. Um, like the shimmer colorway that I shared earlier um, that I used in my Marb Magic, that was the contrast for January. Um, and yeah, all the options are there, hopefully explained in the listing. It is quite extensive um, and there's lots of options, but everything will be inspired by this mood board um, for June, which I'm slightly terrified about this mood board. I have to say, I think it's gorgeous and I love the colors, but um, it's going to be an interesting one to dye. So I'm, I'm excited, equally excited and equally terrified about dyeing up this colorway. It might need a few test runs <laughs> before, before I can actually do it justice. Um, but I will do it justice. And then the other club that I have running is my um, color of the month, which each month you get... Um, you, there's an inspiration image, which I'll, again, I'll pop up here um, each month, and um, you get to see the yarn in advance. Whereas the Fantasy Book Club is a mystery club, this one isn't. You get to see the yarn in advance. Um, so this, oops, this is the yarn for uh, June. Um, this is the colorway. So if I just show you the 100 gram skein, this is June's colorway. And then if you go for the sock set, that's the mini that goes with it. I'm really pleased with this one. 
Um, so yeah, they are currently up on the shop ready for pre-order. Um, and as I said, they are still listed at my old prices. Um, so yeah, the price increase on the clubs won't be happening until July. Um, what else? Um, Beatrix Potter and Hobbit. Um, I've had quite a lot of requests to reopen pre-orders for the Beatrix Potter collection and the Hobbit collection which was launched back in February. Um, I know there were quite a few people who hadn't discovered me when I'd launched the Hobbit collection. Um, so there is a fair amount, I've, I've listed all of the spares from those two pre-orders and left over from uh, East Anglia and everything. All of that is now on the website. So if you head to the Beatrix Potter collection or the Hobbit collection, you'll find all the ready to ship yarn. But there are limited numbers. Like you're going to struggle to get a, sweat a sweaters quantity in most of the colourways if that's what you're looking for. Um, there are limited numbers in them. But I am opening up, it's already there, to be honest. I'd said I was going to do it from the second, but I just thought it was easier to have them open for, um, just to have them open for my brain's not working again just to have them open as soon as the website opened again um so there are pre-orders for all of the Beatrix Potter colorways and all of the Hobbit colorways they are going to be open until look at my diary June the 9th they'll be the pre-orders will be open until June the 9th and then I will get them dyed up and they will ship out on July 7th um, so that gives me kind of four weeks from the pre-order closing to get everything dyed up and shipped out for you. Um, so if you missed them before, or if you didn't miss them before, but actually you want to add to what you bought before, um, those pre-orders will be open on my website for the next week. I'm fiddling with my hair a lot, aren't I? Sorry. Um, so that's that one. And then the last, last little thing is just that I'm putting out a call for samples hopefully I'm going to get that done tomorrow um so the way I do it if you've not come across my sample knitters before the way I do it is I have a newsletter which is specific for anyone that wants to be a sample knitter I will put a link underneath the video and you can sign up to the newsletter I will then send out a newsletter with all the information about what samples I want knit what patterns I want knit time frame when I need them by um, and everything like that when you get the email you have a little look you reply to me and then I will allocate people on a first come first serve basis um, and then I pay you in a gift card for the shop basically um, so if you're knitting with a single skein of yarn you'll get a 20 pound gift card for the shop um, if you're knitting with two skeins of yarn you'll get a 40 pound gift card for the shop um, and that's the way it works basically um, all of the information would be in the newsletter of, of how it works and everything like that um, but I have got a new collection launching in July so the 7th of July looking at my calendar I am launching the first part of the Lord of the Rings collection which again is based off the Middle Earth minis that I ran last year um, so I've got the first part of the Lord of the Rings collection all the colorways are now dyed up and well they've all been tested and dyed up and I've got colorways to do samples with but I want to get samples knit in advance of the launch so that I can share I can share kind of samples and stuff like that in the lead up to the pre-order launching um, so yeah I'll be putting out that call this week and it'll be about a month you'll have about a month I'll need them back at the beginning of July so you'll have about a month to knit but there's nothing there's nothing massive it's um it's mostly socks um and things like that but yeah if you want to sign up and you haven't done so so far I will leave a link underneath the video right that is everything I feel like I've talked for ages I'm so out of practice Whew. so thank you very much for watching thank you for being here thank you for still supporting my business despite the changes um and um yeah I'm nervous about the changes with VAT it's going to be a lot to yeah let's just hope it all works out we will see we'll see how it goes but anyway thank you very very much for watching and I will hopefully see you all in a couple of weeks with another podcast and maybe get another vlog out in the meantime. We will see. Fingers crossed. Bye!